Hello everyone, before we start with this one, I just want to thank you all for 300 plus subscribers. It does not seem much, but for me it definitely is, so thank you again. Now back to today's topic. We are going to take a look at yet another HPC, handheld personal computer. It is another GPD product, but this time in much more laptop-like shape and form. This is GPD Win Max 2, a 10-inch all-in-one handheld PC. My machine came with AMD Ryzen 6800U with RDNA 2 iGPU. 16GB LPDDR5 and 1TB PCI 3 NVMe drive. Let's start with build quality. Winmax 2 feels sturdy and well built. We have a mix of plastic and aluminum build which was a good choice in my opinion. It costs less and overall device weight is reduced. Plastic parts are much better than what my Win3 had and that is improvement that we all wanted to see. Looking at the back side we can see two back buttons on both sides same as with Win3. Both of them can be customized through GPD software to your likings. Then there is optional 4G module that you can get with your device or upgrade later on. Also we have another NVMe expansion slot on the right side. This one is 2230 and not standard 2280. In the middle is your controller covers, storage compartment and next to it we have air integrals. At the back of this device we can see shoulder triggers, air exhaust vents, two USB-C ports from which one is USB 4 ready, then we have HDMI port, USB-A port and audio combo port. On the front side we only have speaker openings and fingerprint power combo button. On the left side we have two card readers. One is for micro SD cards and another is for standard SD cards. Next to them we have reset button in case that machine becomes non-responsive. This will pretty much power cycle whole motherboard and reset machine. On the right side we only have two USB-A ports. I say only but this device have awesome AU compared to some other bigger machines. On top side we only have GPD logo in the middle of the cover. When it comes to display there is not that much to be said except that it's great. I did not notice any backlight bleeding. It's a 10 inch 1600p touch display with 400 nits of brightness and capable of producing really nice colors. My model came with 2D screen that is really nice to use for any kind of content creation, gaming or, or simply enjoying your favorite Netflix show. Not to forget the touch function which is so useful, especially when reading, one can just scroll without any issues. We have built in 2 megapixel up in your nose as I like to call them camera with a decent quality. Position of this camera is not the best, but considering the display can be tilted, I do not mind this position. Quality is decent and will satisfy any need that you can have from built-in cameras these days. Now to the controller. For me this is much better than my Win3 due to the position of joysticks and how you hold this device in your hand. Only thing that I don't like is that control sticks are recessed and for me in a racing game they tend to slip sometimes. I guess I could get used to them but I'm using standard Xbox style controller where I have much more surface to grab on and it just feels better than those recessed mini ones. D-pad is really nice. It is a PS style with a D-pad and for me it works perfectly fine. I love the clicky feedback. We have select start and menu buttons on the right side next to the trackpad. Mouse control switch is on the left. Personally, I do not use that much since trackpad is just in the middle and I prefer that much more. X, A, Y, B buttons are also great, same as D-pad, one of the best to be honest. Now to the best part of this integration, controller covers. Yes, you heard me right. We have a controller covers that will hide your built-in controller for all of those that need to use this device and not go through questions like, what are those things and why do you have them on your laptop? Now a personal note. For me, this device without a grip is almost unusable in handheld mode. For many, it is just fine or even perfect. It all comes down to personal preference. In my case, I cannot use it for more than 30 minutes, since after that my hand slowly goes numb and I have pain in my wrist. It's partially due to sharp edges and also how I hold it to get best grip. Simple solution for me was a grip from Kaz. There are a few designs out there so you can check for yourself, but this one is perfect fit for my hands. I might do a remix of this one to make it more useful and safe to use since as it is now it is extremely unsafe and probability of device falling out of your hand is relatively big. I will update if I decide to do so. Fingerprint scanner is great, it works perfectly fine, position could not be any better since you can use it when hand holding this device or when it is on the table. On top we have L and R buttons, L2 and R2 are analog and they work just fine. Springs could have been stronger since they are too soft in my opinion but pretty much same design as we have had in Win3. L1 and R1 are typical click buttons and they are fine too, there is no wobble at all. Looking at those triggers you will notice that they are almost touching the table, but they are actually not. 
since there is a small gap between table and the buttons. You will need to be careful when picking up this device and laying it on your table and try to avoid making contact with back first and by any means try to do it gently. Trackpad is actually great. It's a rather small one, but what can we expect? Only downside for me, again personal opinion, is that I tend to avoid using it that much since I need to stretch my hand over the keyboard and movement that required precision are not the best. Also I tend to hit some random keyboard buttons here and there. If you have watched my keyboard replacement video, you will know that I have replaced mine for one with German layout. If not, then go watch it since you will learn a lot about internals of this machine. Keycaps and space between them might be too small for some, but for me they are just fine. There is a decent amount of travel and tactile feedback is nice. We also have two-stage backlight, which is not too dim or too bright. Opening this device is easy, you will need few tools and nothing more. You will need to remove all the screws, four of them are on the back side, so don't forget them. Now we can better see the back side of the bottom cover. We have fan dust filter in the middle and next to it is storage for controller covers. On both sides we have contact points for our back buttons. When it comes to internal layout this device is great. On the bottom side we have wireless antennas in the middle and on the both sides we have speakers. And they are firing sound on both sides and the front. Just above that we have vibration motors and in the middle we have 67 watt hour battery which is really decent and it lasts long, but it depends on your TDP configuration. On the right side, we can see our card readers and just above them, we have small space for NVMe drive. Here we can see a decently sized heatsink with the two heat pipes just underneath it. On the right side, we have a fan and in the middle, we have a PU cooling block. On the bottom side is NVMe drive. Underneath NVMe drive and cooling block legs, we have our RAM chips. Cooling on this machine is awesome. Thanks to two heat pipes, this device is silent in standard use and when gaming, it is barely audible. Unfortunately, with WinMax 2, we do not have extra VRM cooling plates. My guess is that GPD thought that due to device size, it was not necessary. I would love to see VRM plates back in their next device since it does help all of us wanting to push those devices a bit more. I did some upgrades to help cooling a bit. Mainly, I have the gap between fan and heatsink to direct more air and create more pressure in this direction. Also thanks to GPD Discord and some great people over there, I found a solution for my uneven parkour temps, which was basically to remove screw next to the heatsink and let those four screws to the APU balance themselves in terms of pressure between die and cooling block. Opening this device with one hand is impossible, hinge design is just too strong so you will need to use both hands. I find this okay since it will prevent display wobble when used in handheld mode. Also what helps is this small opening where we can grab the display and it is easy to open it with two hands. Gaming on this device is fantastic, 9 out of 10 to be honest. 680M RDNA 2 iGPU on this machine is just perfect balance in terms of power and performance. Of course we are going to get RDNA 3 in new devices but this one is just fine. Many games will play well in native resolution but AAA games will struggle. It all comes down to how much power are you willing to give to this APU. And if we are going with standard power draws like Steam Deck, then you will be happy to know that you can run anything at 800p. And if you are willing to give it a little more juice, then you can bump resolution and details even more. Since I was able to sustain 50 watts on this APU, I must admit that gains are not that great. Also, I would not recommend using it at those high power draws on battery alone since it will definitely reduce its life for sure. Now you can take a look at those charts and feel free to ask me any question if you have regarding them. This time I went with Wally Benchmark since it was much more consistent than random games. In short, this device really shines between 15 and 30 watts. Anything above that is just loss of power and not gaining that much. Looking at Cinebench R23, we can see that CPU is much more responsive to power. Best score that I have reached with this device is 12,700 and it happens just once. I will be doing more videos testing some games, so stay tuned for that one. Of course, you can tweak this device for even less power draw or better performance, but I try to keep it simple and not that technical and complicated. Fine tuning is a must with this device, like with any portable device on battery power. There is a lot of resources out there, so I will keep it simple. Be sure to check the BIOS since you can if you want unlock full potential of chip, thanks to unlocked BIOS which is great from GPD side. It is important to understand how demanding your software or games are and from there you can try to tweak it to your likings. After playing with all available options and tools, testing few different ways of controlling my device, I came to a conclusion that I really don't need to tweak every single 
thing on this device. I settle with Motion Assistant app from Frank. I have all that I would ever need. I control my APU, TDP and iGPU behavior as well as fan curve. If you decide that you need full control, I will post links to GPD Discord channel where you can learn a lot more about this device from this great community. There is a lot more that you can do, but that is up to you to decide. Now let's go first with pros. Portability and small size is definitely a pro. Great display, great processor with awesome iGPU. Standard size NVMe drive for easier replacement, extra NVMe slot, and a battery life. Now let's take a look at cons. For me, it is missing VRM cooling plate, mini controller sticks, which I don't really like, high price still, ergonomics in handheld mode. For me personally, ergonomics in handheld mode are just bad. Now to my final thoughts. This device is actually a desktop replacement for some. We have 8 cores and 16 threads CPU that can run at 50 watts in such small device that you can bring with you anywhere you need to. Would I recommend this device? It depends. If you are on the go and you need powerful and portable 10 inch device then of course I would. Even 30 and 14 inch laptops with same chip do not have features and are not powerful like this one. If you are someone that want to play AAA games then again of course I would but you need to dial down your expectations since not every game will be small smooth and nice like on your gaming laptop or desktop machine. It all comes back down to you and your use case. And since I don't want to leave you with more questions than answers, I will say this. If you travel a lot and want to be able to play and actually enjoy your games with reasonable expectations, then get WinMax Duo. If you're a creator on the go, same, get WinMax Duo. If you are looking for something smaller and with better ergonomics, I would suggest looking at Ionia 2 or waiting for Asus ROG Ally that will be here in a couple of months. Thank you for watching and as always consider subscribing. Cheers!